Okay. Wow. Look at There's that. There's a lot of video out there that, like, the people took in dungeons. That's for sure. Artsy shot of dad working. No, don't look at me. Work. We're working on the tail. The tail. Woo! I don't know why I said it like that. The tail of two airplanes. Yes, the tail of. The tail of the stole and the CH-753 actually. Yes. Well, I mean, te I mean, pretty close. Technically, no. I mean, technically, it's one airplane, but but yeah, there are there are similar. Actually, they both have tails. But anyway, um. <laughs> horizontal uh, stabilizer here. It's a little wiggly. Looks like a ladder. Um, Dad, do you have any notes about that? We spent a lot of time trying to understand how to build things upside down. Yeah. Yeah, that was kind of confusing. The building, building, because right now it's upside down, and so we labeled it with the up arrows, or some of, the, some of it came labeled, but it's good to really keep in mind what's up and what's down because the, the way the parts have to fit together and stuff and it's just easier to build it upside down basically so it, you have to keep that in mind just got the whole got the all the framework and everything ready to put the skins on and the main thing is to and once it's put together, it's pretty obvious now. Not to rivet this piece here. Well, yeah. Well, not to not. Well, yeah. To not rivet the this doubler. Um, this this doubler, which is actually the, it's the upper doubler, but also like really anything anything that's on the top or bottom surface, you don't want to rivet, obviously, because the the skin needs to go on. So you need to have something for the skin to rivet to. So. Now that I think about it, that's it's pretty obvious. Um, 
Yeah, and then I think, well, I think we need to put, we need to do our end caps, I guess. You want to talk about how we had to cut this piece? And now it's oh, yeah. not so, so this easy. This piece here, it was kind of hard to, to cut it. Um, and we still haven't riveted this or anything. We just click cut it in place. But it, it was kind of hard to cut it. Um, but what I ended up doing that seemed to work pretty well, it turned out still turned out a little rough. Still turned out a little rough, but was basically to just cut little sections, like relief cuts, um, along the section that I needed to cut out. So instead of trying to do just one big long cut all along this spot, I basically just did uh, perpendicular uh, relief cuts, and that seemed to help. And I just used tin snips, well not tin snips, but si or what are they called? Um, Sheep, sheep, sheep metal sheep, yeah. shears, I guess, snips. And you need some serious muscle strength. Yeah, you gotta have hands like a, some sort of strong animal. Like a gorilla. 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 Yeah, gorilla. And I just smoothed it out um, as best as I possibly could. And I think it should be fine, but I don't exactly, at this moment, know exactly what it does or if it, if it matters how, how specific it is, so. Anyway, um, I think that's it. I think that's that's all I can think of for this part so far. Uh, but yeah, this one was kind of confusing. Kind of confusing because there's a lot of doublers. Like this one has like two dub, a big doubler, a little doubler, and then the same on on this side I think. And then yeah, and then so there's just kind of a lot going on. But.